All right. Can you hear me now? Nope, you don't hear me. Do you see my fingers? Hi, Tyranny. Guys, can you hear me now? Yes. Awesome. Good deal. And can you see me? All right. Well, hey guys, how's it going? How'd you have a, did y'all have a good evening last night and a great day today, whether you were working or day relaxing? I know I had a really good day today. I got to spend some time with my, our oldest daughter and grandkids. Found out we're having our fourth grandchild and it's a girl, which, you know, I'm just so excited it's a little girl. And, you know, I'm, I can be very honest and tell you it's vain because I love little girl clothes. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, she's doing, it's not that far away, actually. I, end of October, she's coming along. Yeah, we're very excited. All right, so guys, tonight what we're going to do is we are going to talk about stencils somewhat. We're not going to talk just about stencils, but I'm going to show you some tips and tricks and fun things that you can do just by, you know, with even without stencils, with just technically dyes. <coughs> you did, Dawn? So we are going to play with stencils and basically almost you can kind of say my palette knife <laughs> and we're going to be using our new Lux. So let me show you these new stencils. I showed you guys these last night. We have two new leaf stencils. They're called, this is Slimline Shadow of Leaves and this is 6x6 six six Shadow of Leaves. So uh, the, what's great about the Slimline as well as the A2, you can use them in both directions. So the leaves you can use horizontal and vertical, so I didn't have to make two of them. And the same thing on this one. Now when you turn this one sideways, it actually forms a great pattern if you look at it. And uh, this would be, this could be a beautiful uh, peacock tail. If you could, if you had like a peacock um, big stamp that could go right here or even just peacock colors, I think would be gorgeous. So these are the two uh, leaf stencils. And then we have our two Christmas trees. Now earlier I was playing with the tall Christmas tree. And as soon as I pulled the stencil off, I'm like, why didn't I make a die for that? Oh my goodness. Why did you not make a die? So what's cool about these is that you get the stencil and you get the mask. So the stencil is the part that uh, where it, the pieces of plastic come out of. And the mask is actually the plastic piece. So if you think of it, a mask is going to cover something just like a mask covers your face. And that'll kind of help you remember that a mask is the part that comes out. And the stencil is basically what most people would think of as trash, okay? So a mask, I always remember a mask, co it covers your paper, okay? And I can remember just like a mask covers your face. Or you could say if you're stamping and you stamp something and then cut it out, that little piece of post-it tape that you put on top of your stamp image is a mask also because it covers up the image. Then we have the, a, the um, six by six. Now, technically, I called this a 6x6, six six, but it's really more like an A2 stencil. You can use it on 6x6, six six, of course. You can use this on Slimline or 5x7. But I angled them, okay, guys? So you could get two, a, a taller tree and a shorter tree. And they also come with the two masks as well as the stencil. So let me open this and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so... And we always do this. I do not, I refuse to let them throw away the trash when they make my stencils. So this is what the stencil part of it looks like, okay? So you see you have a taller tree that fits on the A2 and you have a shorter tree that also fits on the A2. 
this would be the stencil parts, okay? Then these two parts you use as a mask. And I am going to show you in a minute, in a little while, um, some little tips and tricks to do with the mask. So this is what I was talking about when I said a mask covers your face. Yes, almost all stencils. Well, if it's my stencil, it's going to come with a mask. Um, now there's some of them, you know, like the leaf. Can you imagine getting every little teeny tiny little piece? <laughs> Actually, I think my stencil guy would say, I quit, Nicole. No more. <laughs> but when it comes to this, they actually, when they put this in the package, this would have been trash anyway. This is the trash. And, you know, for years I saw them just taking this and throwing it away. And then when I opened my own company, I'm like, hey, don't throw that trash. That's a trash. Don't put that in the trash. That's some good stuff. We need that. Don't throw that away. So that's how the PFS, we got to keep the mask as well as the stencils. So, and the same thing here, you see how you have the stencil and then the long mask. So those are our stencils for this month. But what we're also going to be working with are our, um, these are our new leaves. This is our old, these are, this is our older leaves. So I came out with, so if you look at these, these leaves are two years old. And what I did is I came out with new ones. That's the, almost the same exact leaf, but they're totally different sizes. And they do still have the shadows as well. So we, I'm gonna show you some things. Um, right, I see what you're saying. So, um, so I'm gonna be showing you some tips and tricks to make some fun new backgrounds with the brand new Lux as well as glaze and some um, golden sparkle glitz. I'm still, I still have my jar. They still haven't brought me a jar with a lid. You'd think I'd get one, right? But that's okay. I just filled this jar up again. Then we are going to also use this tree die. It's an oval tree die, and it's a tree that is in the shape of an oval. And we're going to cut this out also. So we're going to be, let's get started. So we are going to be working with, here guys, with, so right now we have six individual Lux colors. You have turquoise jewelry, Arctic Fox, Spanish Moss, Coffee Beans, Aztec Sunflowers, and Autumn Leaves, okay? And we will be coming out with more of these. And if you just so happen last year to have bought a, um, a set of ombre uh, glazes that's called Nutcracker. Those three in that Nutcracker set are all three Lux. Okay, Th that I tricked you guys last year. I wanted to see how they would sell and if people would like them. Well, that was very popular. So we knew that Lux was gonna be a very, very fun product to have on the market. Okay, so let me show you what I've done. Hi, Lucy. Hi, Lucy. Up, oh, Lucy. Lucy just walked in, my standard poodle. She is saying hi. She doesn't like to be far from me. So here is a piece of paper. Now, I did use Bristol Smooth, Strathmore Bristol Smooth. So this is a type of paper. It's not labeled as mixed media, but it can take a lot of abuse, this type of paper. It's thick. And what I like about it is you can use it a lot of water with it. And also um, it's great for using with coloring on markers. And I love to use it with mixed media products. So let me see if I can get, do you see how shiny that is? The exact color of coffee beans and leaves. A wall print, <laughs> that's funny. So that's coffee beans, which is this color, okay? And then you have, the autumn leaves. This is the Lux autumn leaves. And I'm going to show you what I did down here. So don't look right there. So there's autumn leaves. Okay. And then I'm going to show you Aztec. So this is Aztec sunflower. And you know what else? It looks like corn. The perfect color yellow of corn. It's just, and there's a little, what we're going to do down there. Then if we have time, I also went ahead and used last month's 
Lux color called Spanish Moss, which I must have left on my desk. Spanish Moss, and look how, how great that came out. What, that would be cool. Why don't they have glitter wall paint? I think they do have glitter wall paint. I, I think they do. I think I've seen that on television. So this is the Christmas tree, the slimline Christmas tree. This was the off print of, you know, the Christmas tree. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with Strathmore Bristol Smooth. Okay. This is the type of paper that I always use when I'm working with mixed media paper. Um, just because honestly, it, it just, it holds up better. It takes water more better. It takes mixed medium products better. It just seems to work out, you could say. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a palette knife. And I'm going to start with coffee bean. Oh, by the way, your mixed mediums should never be stored upside down. Do you see what happened? Do you see how all that mixed media got into, you see that? You don't want that. Uh, so don't store them upside down. You really truly should store, and I'm going to say this, all mixed media. Yes, Matt, the newest release section is still not up on the website. Okay. Yes, darling, we know. We, I promise you we're trying, not trying to be negative. No, we, we know. We, today just so happened to be the day that our graphic. If you know the name of the product and you go to the search engine at the very top, it will. Um, okay, he's going to look at it for you. Okay, so look, coffee bean. So I'm just going to take this. And with Lux, I find that dragging it. Just go do it on my computer, please. With Lux, and I really like taking it and just kind of like scooping it across. This is almost like scooping ice cream, okay? You know how I always tease and say, don't scoop ice cream when it comes to the sparkle. Lux, you can scoop like ice cream. I mean, you know, just make sure you're spreading it all the way across. So I'm just spreading it here. Now, there is a tool out by ThermaWeb. It's a spreader. And that is a really good tool that I'm pro I was looking for before I started this. But I couldn't find any of them. So I don't know if I left them somewhere or if it's just they ran away and it's time to buy new ones. Not sure. So you can see how easy that is. Do you see that? So how, how easy that is. And then you can also come down here. And if you wanted to, you can make drag lines through it. This is kind of evening it out a little bit. Okay. Now my other standard poodle is by my legs. My Maggie girl. And look, I'm only, my little video room is like a little annex to um, my studio. So there's not much space in here for standard poodles to be walking around. Okay. So I'm just going to pull that down. Okay. And I'm going to leave it like this to let it dry. Okay. I'm going to let this dry for a minute. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to move on to the, um, Yep, the sunflower. Now, look, what I do like about um, the Lux, it doesn't have a lot of, this doesn't make a mess on the lid as much. Isn't that fun? All right. Okay, he said it's there, guys. He got it work. He got it up. He fixed it. You know, we have discovered that internet, um, being in charge of a website, whew, things just like to happen. Just all of a sudden, you know, you're on vacation, chilling at the beach. And next thing you know, you get a message saying your website's down. What? What do you mean your web my website's down? I'm sitting on the beach. I'm drinking a pina colada. I don't want the website to be down. Make it come back up. <laughs> so that didn't happen. But, you know, it could happen for sure. All right, so here we go with our um, Aztec sunflower. Now look what I just did. Did y'all see what I just did? My goodness, Nicole. Let me fix that. 
So I'm just going to spread a little bit of this yellow here. And then I'm going to come down and I'm going to put more of it, don't need that much, down here. Because I want to show you some techniques, some fun ways to make your leaves or trees. All right. Okay. So, oh, and of course, look, I made a mess on that one. With just like with in every other mixed media product, well, especially any of our paper glaze products, Lux products, you, they dry very fast. So you always want to make sure you are cleaning your tools as well as the rims of your jars. All right. So we have one more color. Well, let's do this before we move on, before we go to the next color. What we're going to do is we're going to go back and grab that coffee, okay? We're going to grab that coffee bean. And what I want to do with it is I want to take a little bit, just a little, because we're going to be adding it to this, kind of making a, um, I wouldn't say a mosaic, but kind, we're going to make a hot mess. How about that? We're going to make a hot mess. And what's fun about this is this hot mess is going to be okay, because... Matt, Maggie, no. There's a box of ribbon in here, and Maggie, Maggie, no. No. Sorry. Um, and she's obsessed with this box of ribbon that she's always trying to get into. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my spatula, and I'm just kind of, I don't want to blend it per se. And actually I'm even going to come in here and almost like chop it up a little bit. Thank you, babe. You walked out and she decided she saw an opening and took it. She's trying to get to the box. I'm just going to wipe this off on the sides. I'm going to take a little bit of orange and I'm going to do the same thing. I say orange. It's, um, autumn leaves if you guys knew how many things i name in a month <laughs> it's so funny isn't it babe how many like we're literally if i don't know if i've ever said this but matt always helps me do the sequence mixes and that the garage of our house is where we store the sequence and clay so you see what i'm doing with my spatula i'm just coming in here and creating texture and like i said i'm making a hot mess okay well, this hot mess, once we die cut this, is not going to look like a hot mess. So anyway, so Matt always helps me with the um, sequence because it, it gets heavy after a while, like with the mixing and stuff. So um, he comes in and he helps me with it. <clears throat> and then after I mix a batch, like let's say it's Christmas, after we mix, mix a batch, I have to sit there and immediately think of a name, like right there, off the top of my head, I have to think of a name. I'm like, okay, let's go. Holly Jolly. Nope. Use that last year. Can't use Holly Jolly. Now I'm going to add a little bit of golden sparkle on top of this because I can. Not because I really, you know, I just want to see. The other one I did, I did not add golden sparkle to it, but this is a glitz, so it needs to be stirred. So anyway, so we sit there and we're like, okay, what well, we're gonna name this this Halloween mix? Uh, Christmas color, Santa comes to town. Nope, used that two years ago. All right, let's see. Um, Saint Nick, she used that last week. <laughs> and you do it weeks or months in advance. Yes, so there are sometimes, actually sometimes Matt. I always have him help me, but sometimes um, we will go in there and we'll go in there and literally like eight hours later, we like look up and go, I think I had enough. <laughs> so I'm just adding this sparkle in here just because, like I said, I want it to be a hot mess. So I just want to come in here and play around with it and just show you guys, this is how you discover new things. Okay. Just like this. Look, this is still wet, but it's drawing really quick. So there's golden sparkle. Definitely with sparkle, guys, always wipe that lid. All right. Now 
I don't know about you, but here we have yellow, orange, brown. I put some extra gold. I think we should add a little pink, okay? And this right, oh, thank you, Kathy. So this right here, this is a color that we introduced a paper glaze color two months ago, or last month actually, called hibiscus pink. So I want to add a little bit of hibiscus pink because believe it or not, a lot of leaves are pink. Um, when you go leaf hunting, a lot of leaves will, um, they'll, they're, they'll, before they obviously turn red, they'll have like a, or an orange, almost like a pink purple hue to it. Oh yeah. I don't, I don't use the, um, the cling wrap, I know it's a great trick, but if I wipe my lids and make sure I'm putting it on tight, but I'm glad you discovered that tip. So I'm gonna take a little bit of pink and this is paper glaze. So this is going to give it a totally different texture. This is going to dry slick and pearlescent. So we're gonna have all these different textures and colors. Now, obviously all of our leaves are not going to be the same. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come out here to the edges. And believe it or not, most of the time, my favorite leaves are the ones that have, like, that are like this. See this down here, right here, that has some white left on it. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to purposely transfer. Now you don't want to mix, right? I want to see the different colors, but I want to make sure that I'm also overlaying and I'm getting those colors. And I really like it when there's just like a touch of color hanging around. I do think we lost a little bit of our orange. So I'm going to wipe that lid. I am going to go back in a little bit more with autumn leaves and I am going to stick this directly in there because I don't think it's going to hurt it. So I am going to come in and add back some orange leaves, oh, golly, autumn leaves. See this is when I had trouble coming up with a name. This one when I was trying to name it, I don't know why but we just have, we have so much autumn, you know. Um, fall blessings, autumn blessings. We just have so many autumn and fall things that it literally got just to the point where I'm like, okay, what are we going to call it? <laughs> we got to put a name on it because we got to mail it out today. <laughs> it's funny. The little problems of the world, huh? All right. Now that we have a nice hot mess, I'm going to show you up close. You see this hot mess? This hot mess is going to make amazing leaves because you're going to have all these different textures. And look, I'm not trying to smooth it out. You don't want it. This I smoothed out. Here, I want it to stay nice and tall and even come in and I'm making little marks with my palette knife. I told you my palette knife could be my tool tonight. Coming in and just, you know, adding a little bit more texture. Okay, so that's it for this one. Okay, now let's go back. And what color did we not smooth? Okay, so now we're gonna go back to the brown one that we just did, okay? Now, I always believe, oh, so messy. Look, my hands aren't even dirty. I mean, a little bit, but not that much. <laughs> okay. I like green, even though it's fall, I still like anything in nature that's gonna have a green color to it. So whenever I'm coloring something or teaching a coloring class or anything, I always tell people you cannot judge, cannot judge what something looks like until you add green, okay? So here, I'm going to add some green. Now, we don't have a green Lux. This is the Coffee Bean Lux that I spread earlier, but I do have several greens um, in paper glaze. And you know, I, paper glaze to me is just, it's like the basic medium, but mixing it with something else or using it in a combination with another product truly brings out the pearlescent um, silkiness, if you will, of 
paper glaze. So this is my favorite color, guys. Be surprised. It's called Fern Green. Honestly, if you do not have the paper glaze color Fern Green and you're asking for Christmas presents, Fern Green is my favorite color. Basically, it's forest green. When I was a teenager, like in the color box, we called it forest green, not a teenager, when I was a kid. So I'm going to take a little bit of this paper glaze. And remember, paper glaze, you don't need to stir it. It just will come out, and it's a thicker product. So I'm going to come in and just add some green. And like I said, I'm a, girl, I'm a green girl. And I do want to come in down here where there's white. And I also want to add some down here as well. Okay, so there's my um, forest green. Now I'm going to add some lime to this. So this is lime green. That was not a hard name to come up with. I don't want to put too much lime but I can tell you you do see the color lime in the fall because again you have trees changing colors and one day there'll be one color and the next day it'll change to a whole different color and what do I know I live in South Louisiana we don't even have fall y'all know that we truly do not have fall in South Louisiana you know what fall is summer our summer lasts six months <laughs> right babe we have a six month long summer and it might cool off. Last year we only wore our jackets two days, twice, out the whole entire year. Isn't that nuts? Okay, now this is succulent green. It's a bluish green and you know, I'm just gonna add a little touch of it. Why not? Um, it might be a mistake, not sure. We'll just add a little bit of it, but it does have a, a bluish hue to it and what's great also about paper glaze is paper glaze will give you peaks okay so it doesn't have to be flat it won't move or jiggle or, or go around different places but you can take your um, whatever tool you're using and you can make peaks with it all right so I think instead of adding yellow to this, we have so much green, I think we're going to add orange. So where's that um, autumn leaves? Let me wipe this off. See, it's not messy. It's not making a mess. What I do is I make sure I don't leave lots of things um, you barely, you are barely getting anything resembling summer here. Oh, no, <laughs> it is so hot here, so hot. Um, it, it's just, you know, we, we pretty much everybody stays inside unless you have to go outside. All right, so I'm gonna just come back in with a little yellow. This is, yep, yeah, this is Autumn Leaves Lux. I'm not trying to mix the colors per se, but I am just trying to get those colors working. Okay. I don't know. I think it needs some yellow. You think? Let's see. Oh, look at this one. Ooh. Look how this one's drying, guys. The very first one we did. Look at that. Can you see that gorgeousness? That gold sparkle on top? This is, this is good. These are going to be some beautiful leaves. It's really good. Okay. It's always amazes me how to look at it while it's drying. I think we're going to put some golden sparkle. Um, some golden sparkle. All right. So we're going to dip this in. Don't need too much. Maybe can I just get it to fling itself on there? I mean, I could water this down. But why? Why water it down? Keep all the sparkle. Girl, you know you want all that sparkle. You don't want to water it down. But you could. 
All right. I think that's beautiful. Let me rub this excess off right here. Now, and you have all, see this piece right here? I will die cut some of this with leaves, but the majority of this, after I'm done, is gonna go straight into my um, scrap drawer. I have a scrap drawer of, for just for like mixed media leftover stuff. So in my scrap drawer, I have pieces of red, I mean of red, um, paper glaze, whatever little snippet of paper mixed media stuff, I do not throw it away. If it's a little chunk left, even if it's a little corner, I keep it. Cause you know why? Santa Claus might need a red hat in the next couple of months. And then I don't have to pull out um, any glit well, glitter or even um, paper glaze. Cause I kept that little piece of red and stuck it in my drawer and that's where it is. All right, now, now, let's see. I think we're going to pull the ones that I did earlier. These, I'm gonna show you. So I did these, um, they're, yeah, they're dry. Um, I don't know, like, what time is it? An hour ago? Yeah, it was about an hour ago that I did these. So they should be dry. The time I know uh, the color of I mean the time of how long it takes for something to dry, it, it depends on your invite your climate. It also depends is it raining outside? In South Louisiana, if it's raining outside, it's going to take a little bit longer. Um, how thick you put something, if you you know put it very thin, obviously it's going to dry faster, right? Okay. So what we're going to, oh, and this is the, just the brown. So what we're going to do is we're going to die cut this. And the first thing I wanted to die cut is this is a die cut from March of this year. And what it does is it die cuts a tree in an oval shape. Okay. And basically it fills up an A2 card. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to die cut this. Let's see, will it fit through there? Yes. All right, so we're going to die cut this. And, you know, it's okay if you have it, like, hanging off kind of like this, like where there's some white showing, because it all that does is add interest to your uh, tree. So let me get some tape and tape this down. Actually, before we do that, I'm going to cut it. So I like to pre-cut. Um before I put the tape because after you put the tape down you really don't shouldn't mess with your dies too much so okay I might not keep this this teeny little piece but you know the rest of this is going to be kept and put in my drawer my um my mixed media drawer so now I'm going to take some tape I see something get out there well, a lot of you might already have this tree it sold very well I don't know if it was oval, what was it called? Full round tree dye, yes. And it came out in March of this year. All right, so I have my little Anna Griffin die cut machine, who, is not turned on. Hey babe, Matt, oh, hold on. Okay. Am I lucky? Yes. We had we were having issues with um the electricity the electrical all of a sudden. It's always something when you go live. It really is. All of a sudden the electrical in this room decided, oh, hey, I don't want to work. Which I mean makes no sense. So this actually is barely going to fit on here, and it's not. All right, I'm going to go run, I'm gonna run to the other room real fast and die cut this because it doesn't fit.
painting a metal shim with this because it's an intricate dye going through a mixed media product. So I'm putting it through. Once I'm feeding it all the way through with the metal shim, then I'm going to take the sandwich without moving it and I'm flipping it over and feeding it through a different, the opposite direction of the first time I fed it through. And since we're live, I'm going to feed it through a third time, just in case, because you just never know. So let me show you my sandwich. Okay, guys, watch. Here's my sandwich. And what I did is here's plate A. Okay. Here is my metal shim. And you always want your metal shim to go on top of the side with the blades. Okay. And then my paper, my die. And what I did is I had this on top of here. I do a lot of die cutting, guys, a lot. And in, so I fed it through once like this. And then when it came out, I flipped it upside down and I rotated it and fed it in again. And the reason why I do that is because the plates are not perfect anymore. They've been used and abused. You see how mine look? So Move, having it going in a different directions is going to help that intricate die go through and come out hopefully beautifully cut, right? All right. So let's see. Another tip. Don't just automatically rip the whole thing out. When you have an intricate die like this, let it stay in here, okay? And come in here. And let the die stay and allow the, um, I mean, the paper to stay and allow the die, the actual metal part of the die, help you if you so happen to have one piece of it that doesn't come out all the way. So you see, I'm slowly, this, it's, it's cut. You can see that it's cut. Do you see? It cut beautifully. But, you know, sometimes when you have an intricate die, when you go to lift it up, you can very easily tear it. So I'm taking my time, and this is cut, but I'm using this little tool that's going to end the die to help me hold it down so I can lift up all these little pieces and get them out. Now, I mean, you might just be the kind that just want to rip it off and move on, and that's good, too. But I know that with this intricate little die and that thick layer of paper lux, I need to try to use any tricks that I might know to get it to come out nice. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it does. It's a beautiful oak tree. You know, um, I live in South Louisiana and we had that hurricane, Hurricane Ida, and we had this area in South Louisiana called um, Oak Alley and what it was I get it, I'm anxious and want to pull it apart I know but you want to work it because you don't want to pull it apart this is the best way to not tear it okay so anyway for Hurricane Ida we had these um, hundred plus year oak trees that literally were planted down the um the driveway of an old plantation house and they were hundreds of years old i mean the plantation house is still there i think but you, every one of those oak trees died can you imagine a tornado went straight down and because of that it just ripped all those and i'm talking like 50 trees I'm a total savage and just bang. Yeah, you're right. I'm a savage too, you know. But with something like this, instead of it tearing, I'm just going to take a little bit of time. See? 
doesn't take that long. Now, if y'all remember, I used this part to make an underwater sea card. Do y'all remember that card? To me, this looks like under the sea. So you might not want to throw this away. This literally could be part of an under the sea card. All right, so I'm gonna pick up my die. And now I'm going to start pushing it through the other side, okay? There is a finesse to die cutting. Um, it do, it's not just stick it in the machine and get it done. There are things that need patience. And I know this is killing you. I understand. But we want to get this all out. Now, guys, if we just used a plain piece of paper, okay, with no medium on it, no no thick medium, I would not be doing this. I'd have just take actually, I'd have just done this. And I would have, the die would have fallen out. But when it comes to something like this, that you put so much time and money into using it with a mixed media product, you got to take your time. Yeah, doesn't that look like an underwater scene? Look at that. Isn't that cool? I actually, I did a card on a live where I used this with an underwater scene. Uh, I love the ocean. I'm kind of, I love the ocean and I'm scared of it at the same time. I'm scared of sharks, you know, like everybody should be. All right. Okay, now here we go. Hopefully nothing tears off. There we go. And there's our tree. So we just have some weeding to do. Just need to come in here and pull this out. This is why I like using it in the die, because having it in the die allows you to protect the little teeny tiny pieces that might not, they, they should, they all cut, but you just never know. Sometimes there's a plate that has a little buckle in it. You know, a lot of times we think that the problem is, um, that the problem with uh, die cutting is always the die. You know, I find about 70% of it is actually your plates and about 20% of it is your machine. It's not very often it's actually the die that's causing problems. It's usually a combination of um, papers too thick or you're not using a shim or something like this. Okay, so we can see how beautiful our tree came out with our paper looks, right? I'm sure you guys don't want to sit here and watch me fight with the rest of it because it is very delicate. But we're going to move on to leaves, and I'm going to have Matt finish this. It's really just this one a couple of pieces. And I'll have Matt finish finagling this so we can have it finished. Hey, babe. While we do this. Okay, so now what I want to do is this the one? Oh, this one's still wet. This one's dry. This, and I have my machine is big enough to do this. We're going to die cut those leaves. Okay. So we're going to die cut. Remember, remember, we have new leaves that we're going to use with our old leaves as well. So these are the new leaves. This is the um, oak, I think. And they do have shadows. So if you want to use them with the shadows, you can, or you could use them, you can actually just use just the shadow to make a full leaf if you like. <clears throat> so I'm gonna take these off. I don't think I'm gonna use the shadows. Cause to me, the shadow sometimes takes away from um, what you're working on. And I'm just, I'm gonna purposely pick some white, some white, okay? So let's see, because I don't want them to be too perfect. I want them to be a little off. Okay, then last, the previous years, see, I keep all of them together. So this pouch right here, our, one of our six by six pouches has the trees from, I don't know if these were last year or if it was from the year before, 
because these leaves are very that we use these leaves and look how much larger so this was the original set and here's this the new version so you can see that there definitely is a um, difference in size and then here is a really big one so you can it does a really good job of stepping down and showing you the different sizes okay so let's do this I'm going to figure out I'm going to use this to trim my paper okay and then I'm going to be using the skinnier Anna Griffin so here's our paper okay and then we're just going to you know what I'm just going to load this whole thing up with these leaves why not and actually I'm doing it wrong because the well I'll just flip it over after so I want to get some of that white okay I don't want it to be just um, perfect picture perfect color so you see why I was really kind of not trying to mix it in per se but definitely trying to get it to come together without it actually blending into a color okay so there's the shadows for the older one so i'm going to tape this down because what's going to happen i don't usually use this much tape but for live television i'm going to use this much tape thank you i'm anxious to cut the one with the pink in it i don't think we're going to be doing it tonight because it's um it's not going to be dried in time but this is dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this up. I'm going to place that here. And I'm going to... Ah, flip this over. No, not. I should go like this. Because if you remember, we want the die coming in contact with the metal shim. And then we're going to put a plate on top. All right. So now we got our sandwich done. Here's my little Anna Griffin machine. Um, I love this. This is my favorite machine. It's It works always. It does it sometimes. Uh-oh. I'm saying you always work. What's the problem, buddy? Okay, stop. All right. My sandwich is kind of thick. The larger leaves in the more set are actually more of a skeleton leaf. They create an outline that you can layer over the shadow. Okay. I'm assuming that's Sarah that's saying that. And look, I flipped it over. Flipping it over and I'm going to run it through one more time. I don't do this with everything, but I do this when I have something that is going through a mixed media. I know I jinxed it, right? No, my sandwich was as thick and it just didn't like it at first. All right. So here we go. Go back over there. All right. So let's see. And see, I did cut it with that metal shim. So when I flip it over, that one didn't cut out. Um, I think we're going to run it through one more time. Let me flip this over one more time. We have a lot of mixed media. See why I taped it down one more time. You know, if you want pretty things, right, you got to work for them. The larger leaves in the more sets are actually more of a skeleton leaf shape. They create an outline you can then layer over the shadow. Okay, so what she's saying is you can use the shadows from the new set as a layering set with the older set. So when you have both sets together, it really gives you um, a bunch of different varieties of leaves. All right. 
so here go our leaves. And what I'm going to do is, this is one of those things that I said, I like to use the dye to help me, <clears throat> excuse me. So there's one. <coughs> there's one. <clears throat> excuse me. And I'm savage too. I will sit here and throw them on the ground. Well, <clears throat> on my desk, which I have no idea where my uh, paper piercer went to. I did have it. So I'm going to take a little bit of tape and just kind of wrap it around my finger. And sometimes this is a very good way to pull out a die that has decided it wants to stay in. Nope. My, my, my paper piercer is on the floor. There it is. Hey, Matt, can you come here, please? Okay, it was on the floor. So that's what these little holes on the back of dies are for, for you to stick your paper piercer in. And it helps the, I need you to finish getting that out for me. So those little holes on the back actually help you fish apart your leaves. Look at that one. That one came out nice. There's another paper piercer on my desk. <clears throat> so here are the bigger ones. Let's see. And I can't tell you if I had um, put the Lux products on this paper. These are kind of sticking a little bit also because the Lux was done today. Ooh, look at that. So there are those. These are actually the kind of leaves. You don't need many on a card. Yeah, they look really cool. Um, you don't need many of them on your card because they're so vibrant. <clears throat> and, you know, if you wanted to, you could look at die cut the paper. If you wanted to add a color to this, you could come in with like a brown Copic marker and fill in the little spaces that are white. If you didn't like the white so much. <clears throat> All right, we got two little baby ones to get out. Oh, that's a beautiful one. So you see, I like the white. I like the white edges. So usually when I do leaves, I will sit here for like an hour and cut and cut and cut. And I'll cut until, you know, I guess I get tired of it. Oh, this is one with the glaze. Can y'all see that? How beautiful the glaze is. The difference between the Lux, so you see the glaze, it's shimmery. Do you see that, the pearlescent? So it has some Lux to it, and it just gives it a totally different look. Isn't that great? And these leaves are so pretty that if you wanted to do something with these, like <clears throat> one of my daughters has an all year round Christmas tree, <laughs> I'm not throwing this away. This is gonna go in my drawer for the next time I make leaves. So um, she has an all year round Christmas tree because, so, you know, she's, she's only 25. So she lives in an apartment with her roommate and they threw the box. So they bought this Christmas tree together, right? And they thought, okay, well, we're gonna have this Christmas tree forever, blah, blah, blah. My daughter threw the box away. <laughs> So when they went, it was time to take the tree down at the end of the year. There was no box, right? So <laughs> they decided they were going to leave the Christmas tree up all year round. Why? 
because they didn't have a box to store the tree in. <clears throat> so silly. So here I'm just going to um, die cut some specifically on top of the Aztec. Um, I'm not doing shows right now. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't tell what your name is. We So this is what happened with us and shows. So when we did shows, the name of our booth was Nicole Peterson Designs. And we did shows for 10 years. In 19, I'm sorry, in 2019, Picket Fence Studios had gotten too large for us to run half, time, half of the time from the road. So we ended up um, deciding in 2019 at the end of the season that we were going to stay home full time and focus just on PFS. Well, you know, then COVID happened. It was just dumb luck that we had made that decision, that we had made that decision to uh, get out of the booth traveling. It was just, like I said, this is a perfect one for what I was saying. You see how some of it is stuck? I'm going to put my die back on and I'm going to use my die to see, look, you see what happened? My, it wasn't cut right here perfectly. So I put my die back in and I used the die kind of like to push down and look what it did. It, it cut it out. Use your dies, try different ways, things to get them out. Look, there's the tree. There's the beautiful tree. He saved us. So our tree came out great. Okay, so let's see. Oh, look how beautiful. So look, this is just the Aztec um, sunflower without any extra decoration. And see, so you want to have some of these solid leaves, okay? You don't want everything to be this bright over the top. You want to have some solid ones. Do you see? So when you're making your cards, these are like little accents, if you will. All right. Let me pop these out. And then I'm going to show you guys how I made the Christmas tree stencil. Because it is just so fabulous. It is too good not to show you. Look at that. That is just gorgeous. You know what you can do? You can use a Copic marker. Let me grab a marker. So nobody freak out. These are actually not Copics. These are like a cheaper version Copic that I kind of just like mess around with. So it doesn't, it's not going to hurt my inexpensive marker. But you could come in here if you want and add some accenting on this yellow leaf. It doesn't have to be on brown. But it will stay and because you're using this mixed media product. And all of our mixed media products dry on porous and non-porous surfaces. So if you wanted to do a little marker magic, I think these are the also new, um, you can come in and all I'm doing is tracing the, the edges, okay? I'm just coming in and tracing the edges. Okay, and then you can actually come in with some, um, that's actually a really good technique. You can now come in with some alcohol ink mixative and spray that on top and it'll move around and be really pretty. So if, and it, let's say you don't like it, you could always come and put one of your prettier ones on top of it. You could layer it or you could do this. You could get some Copic Blender. I went and grabbed my little Copic Blender. Um, and you could blend. Oh, look at that. 
spray a little oh, oh gorgeous can y'all see this so i sprayed the copic blender on the leaf which turned it into which turned the alcohol marker into like a regular alcohol ink and look what that did can you see it the color that i laid down is absorbing in and it's going into all the different edges of the leaf and all this is is copic blender basically it's the zero of the leaves okay well i want to do that again let's do it with this one let's add a lot of brown and see what happens so what i'm saying about my daughter so they just keep their christmas tree up all year round and then, and then they uh just change it so if it's like her roommate's birthday they turn it into like a birthday tree or they did a little Easter tree. <laughs> you think they would have thought to just go buy a box, huh? <laughs> between the two of them, there's a lot of educational money that was spent between both of them. And uh, <laughs> the fact that they throw the box away and like, okay, I guess we keep the tree up all year now. <laughs> so silly. So look, here's this one. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm gonna take this yellow one and give it a kiss. <gasps> Ooh, that looks good. Can y'all see that? Can you see? Babe, he's supposed to come in here when I need the light. Honey, do y'all see that? What that alcohol ink did? Wow. I'm mean, not alcohol ink, the Copic blender. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's always fun to mess around. And look, I can even dump this in here and use it to move it around to pick up even more brown. Gorgeous. Let's try this little one. This is how techniques are born, just like this. Where you're like, oh, wait. If I did this, would this happen? And lucky enough, sometimes it does. There we go. Now they're really coming, look at this. They're gorgeous. Now I'm gonna have to make a card with them. The yellow one is still my favorite. Look at that. You know, see? Look at them. The paper, the, the marker just went and sucked into the little um, pieces. And that happened because paper lux and paper glaze, you can write, you can use alcohol inks on them because they're a, uh, and, and, and even, okay. So the paper lux turned the paper into a non-porous surface. Basically it turned it to plastic if you will. And then that allowed the alcohol ink to be applied. And then when we use the Copic blender on top, it allowed the Copic um, marker to kind of like bleed out all over the place. Isn't that fun? All right. Okay. All right. So I think we're going to walk away from the leaves for now because I still want to show you guys, and has it been an hour? Yep, it's been over an hour, which, I mean, I don't mind, but you know, other people actually have lives that don't just focus around crafting. Some people do. I don't, even, I don't know any of those people, but you know, someone has to. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna clean my glass mat off, but I want to show you guys how quick it is to do this, okay? For the Christmas tree. So I have my Christmas tree and I put pixie spray on it. Okay, it's all nice and pixie spray. And I I'm gonna I don't know what I want to color with this, but after this, I'm gonna go look on Pinterest and I'm gonna find a color palette that has this is the Spanish moss lux that we released last month. Okay, and I'm gonna go find a color palette 
um, that matches this and use that color palette from, um, from Pinterest to turn this into a Christmas card. Because uh, I don't want to add, I'm going to have to look. All right, so let me get a piece of paper. Look how beautiful this one is. And you see all this space down here? It's gonna make some gorgeous, gorgeous leaves. Put this down. Okay, I do like to always use a full sheet of paper. That way, you know what? This paper underneath it is kind of buckled. Let me get, because it had so much moisture on it. Let me get rid of these two pieces. I'm just putting them to the side and let them drop. They're not wet. They're just kind of, you know, suck up some of the dampness from the Lux blending that we did. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to, they're little bitty tiny pieces. So I'm going to make sure you have to use pixie spray with this guys. Okay. But I'm going to make sure that I'm actually pushing them down. Okay, so I did this one with forest moss. How about if I do this next one with turquoise jewelry? That way we can see what the tree would look like if it came out a darker shade of lux. All right, so let's see. So I'm gonna, this is turquoise jewelry, and I'm just going to take it and just push it down. And it just goofed up because I felt it grab. It's always important that when you wash your stencils, you don't actually wash them. You just take them to the sink and allow the water to run over them instead of using like a paper towel to dry it or wipe them off because these little bitty pieces of yes they were moist thank you sometimes words are hard um because when you dry your stencil with a paper towel you have a great chance of picking at one of these little tiny pieces and i probably should have added more pixie spray before doing this. But my pixie spray is about to run out. And someone told me there was a different brand on the market. I have no idea. It was Sarah. Sarah, tell us what brand it was that you found. So I am do I'm going much slower with this than I would a normal stencil because it's got delicate little pieces. And what I'm not going to do is take my take my palette knife and go shh. Oh, that would be a total mess. So let me wipe this off. Look, I didn't get any on the lid, so I don't need to wipe that lid. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this up. Ooh, I felt it pick up at a few places, so it might not be perfect. <sighs> not bad, not bad, not bad. And I'm going to leave those little pieces. I'm not going to try to get those pieces out. I think it came out pretty good. What do y'all think? Now, what I'm going to do with this, see this? I'm taking it. And I'm putting it down right here. And then I'm going to get something like, um, I guess this one, this piece of paper and push this down and rub it. Okay. Scotch create spray mount light duty adhesive. Good Lord. That's a name. Make sure it says repositionable. Oh, Sarah. So Scott creates spray mount light duty adhesive. Now, how am I going to remember that to type into Amazon? <laughs> All right. So there's your off print of the tree. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and I'm going to do a third print. And I'm going to pull it up. Well, I got one, a, a third print with it when it pushed through. How much do I have left? Ah, this is when... Sorry, this is when you need four hands. But I'm going to go for a fourth print. And what am I going to use? Uh, I guess another piece of paper. I'm out of scratch paper. I usually have on hand, like, notepads, you know. But for some reason, I ran out. And now that i got to go buy whatever that stuff is Sarah just said, with that long name, i got to go buy that. So I need to remember to buy some um, scratch paper also. All right. So there's our fourth print. Now this immediately needs to go run underwater, but don't pick. You see this? Guys, if you get this caught in a paper towel, you will destroy it. Okay. I'm telling you, but look, it did a great job. Look how beautiful that is. Now it's not perfect. Okay. This flicked out when I pop this like popped up, but look how cool that is. I'm going to leave all that. I'm leaving that. It's great. There's a little excess right there and a little right there. Well, that's a reason to embellish, embellish, right? So this is what it looks like in turquoise jewelry. And this is what it came out in Spanish moss. Okay. These were, um, this is last year's, last, last year, last month's colors. So I don't know with this, see this, this might, after this dries, what might be cool is to come in here with like a pink marker and just trace all the extra white space and, or how about instead of a marker, you could just do ink and trace and add pink into the middle center of all that tree because most of the design of the tree is still there. Yep. I love the ghost prints too. Especially this one. You see this one? This is pretty much the outline of the tree. Well, I should have had a die made for this. I'm so disappointed. Wouldn't that be great to have a die of that? I don't know what I was thinking. It's too late for this year. But maybe I can have time to do it next year. All right, guys. So let's review. We did our Christmas tree in two colors. We did Spanish moss and turquoise jewelry. We did our brown tree, which now I can't find. Um, where did the tree go? Oh, there it is. So there's our tree that Matt finished popping out for us. And, you know, if you look at this, this kind of, you see how it tore right there? You know what you do? You go get a brown Sharpie and you color in that back part of that's white and then put some glue and glue this to these two little pieces together. And nobody's ever going to know. And you see this right here? He didn't pop it out all the way. I always, a lot of times, I actually will come in with a brown Sharpie and go around the tips. And just just in case um, it's showing white, just to give it a little. And also, if you make the darker, the outer edges darker, it does give it more depth. So, yes. And then we have our beautiful leaves. My desk is a complete disaster. It is like unbelievable. Way too many projects at one time. But my goal is just teach you guys techniques and how to use your product. Not necessarily just teach you how to make a card. Since I am the creator actually of all these products, um, I wanted to make sure that you guys saw different ways of how to use the mixed media products. Um, okay, so the rest of this week of our seven and seven um the schedule is going so we're going to be following the exact schedule that was posted okay don't leave yet guys we're going to be using the same schedule that was posted but there might be a different person coming on to be your teacher that night or during the day okay so you know don't be surprised if you know um sarah shows up at a time where someone else is supposed to be. I have a um, retailer's event coming up and normally I do three of these, but I, I can't do three of these and that other event. So Sarah has very graciously 
um, stepped in and said that she would pick up my slack. So you guys get to have Sarah three nights. One, two, three. Three nights, guys. And she's going to show you how to make that beautiful um, Christmas card. So follow the times, okay? However, we will only be on the community page, okay? So we'll not be going through, I think this is YouTube. So Sarah will only be on the community page because for, I don't know, some kind of tech reason. So again, follow the schedule. You never know who the teacher's going to be this time for just because, you know, it's life. And we are hoping to see you guys the rest of the week. We, um, the girls spend a lot of time preparing things for you guys, and they love, love spending this hour with you, as well as I do, too. It's just fun to hang around with people that have the same exact, um, you know, um, interests, you could say. So, I uh, hope you have a great night. I'm going to go find supper. Thank you, Sarah, for everything you did tonight. And I'll see you guys around. Bye.